Having stripped our microwave oven and salvaged many useful components, the most prized of which is the mains transformer. This is a typical transformer comprising of an input winding, the primary. It is usually at the bottom and made up of the heaviest gauge wire, as opposed to the secondary, the output winding, which is made up of many more turns and much finer wire. I use a lot of these transformers, sometimes in their present state as relatively low current but high output voltage devices. Many thousands of volts in the case of microwave oven transformers. This voltage can be positively lethal and unless your name is Lazarus you will not get a second chance if you get this wrong. Fortunately for this project we do not require high voltage so we're going to replace the secondary with a low voltage but high current winding. I found the best way of removing the secondary is with a fine toothed hacksaw. Cutting close to the laminations and stopping before you reach the primary. It is imperative you do not cut into the primary. The slightest mark or nick will render the transformer useless. Having cut through a section of the secondary, it is now a relatively simple matter of using a piece of wood and with sharp blows repeatedly each side to drive out the secondary which will leave you with just the primary in the laminations. This is the secondary that we drove out. There's not much you can do with this but copper is at an all-time high in scrap value and is currently worth £2,100 per tonne. In winding the new secondary I've used multi-strand flexible cable of the type used in motor cars between the starter motor and the battery. Two or three feet should be more than ample. Tightly wind on as many turns as space will allow and bring both ends out on the same side. Here I've temporarily connected the mains to the primary and the earth going to the laminations. I've also connected a multimeter to the secondary set on low voltage AC scale. We require a minimum of two volts. Six or so would be better still but to achieve this we would have to use a smaller cross-section cable in order to get more turns. This will increase voltage but as voltage doubles current halves. We'll switch on and we have 2.6 volts. This will be sufficient for our needs. Although the output voltage is low and therefore quite safe to handle, it is still powered by the mains. Because of this I have enclosed the transformer in a box. The ends of the box are made of perforated zinc to encourage the circulation of air. The front one being admitted here for the purpose of clarity. I have included a neon confirming the unit is plugged in and a push to make switch to energize the primary. You could, if you wish, make a timing device but in order to keep this project as simple as possible, I have admitted one here. The secondary connects to electrodes via two brass blocks. These blocks are drilled out the size of a cable, which is tinned and soldered in order to achieve a good connection. In this instance, one electrode is held stationary, while the second is pivoted by a simple CAM device that opens and closes the electrodes. The electrodes are turned or filed to a point after which a small flat is added. The surface contact area 
needs to be about an eighth of an inch in diameter. To demonstrate, I'll use two pieces of scrap stainless strips, which will be placed between the electrodes and closed. Now we'll apply some current. That should be long enough. Now we'll open the electrodes, try not to burn my fingers. And there we have a perfect spot weld. In order to get that apart, you would need a hammer and a chisel. Although this DIY welder will not give you 100% duty cycle, after about six or seven spot welds, switch off and allow to cool down. I hope you found this informative. Thank you for watching.